Just what you thought you had the last speaker. Um, another one to go, I'm afraid. And a human robot. <laughs> See ya. Um, Part of the Unite, I'm speaking in support of the Contemporary Resolution 2. Um, conference decommissioning seems to be the word in everyone's lips in the oil and gas sector. Shell announced uh, an announcement of plans to remove facilities in the Brent field was closely followed by Nicola Sturgeon's announcement of a £5 million Scottish Government fund to support decommissioning projects. Decommissioning is, of course, a major emerging issue. Unite strongly believes that a coherent plan must be established to ensure as much of the work as possible is retained in Scotland and the UK. It is estimated that until the mid-2050s, around 470 platforms, 5,000 wells, 10,000 kilometres of pipelines and 40,000 concrete blocks will have to be removed from the North Sea. Oil and Gas estimates that decommissioning costs through to the 2050s will range between 30 to 60 billion pounds. Now, with all this talk, some people might be forgiven for having the impression that the days of new exploration and extraction in the North Sea have come to an end. The night is clear that that's simply not the case. Only last week, geologists said that there could be reserves of oil and gas in areas around Scotland's coast based around the Rock Hall Basin. In October, Oil and Gas Authority published research on the potential of small pools of oil and gas in UK waters. It's estimated that there is an equivalent of more than 3 billion barrels of oil untapped underneath the UK continental shelf and described it as a very significant opportunity. This is in addition to the previously estimated 22 billion barrels of oil and gas in the continental shelf. So, this isn't a question about whether there is oil. The question is, how can we help create the conditions necessary to stimulate investment and to induce extraction? In our opinion, support for industry should include, but not limited to, urgent action on government revenues from offshore oil and gas. For these reasons, we are clear the offshore sector cannot be left exclusively to market forces. There is a national interest to be taken into account. The industry needs to have confidence that it can invest for the future and a certainty about the fiscal framework for a sustained period to see it through the current crisis. If the activity is to be maintained, the industry needs an injection of fresh capital. The Oil and Gas Authority has a strong mandate to maximise production, but we need more imaginative policies, including the use of Scottish and UK government borrowing powers to leverage money in the sector. That should include public stakes in the new infrastructure and support existing facilities. The United believes there is no clear strategy for decommissioning in Scotland, but we need one, and it has to involve the trade unions directly. The Scottish and UK governments must intervene in order to explore opportunities in the sector, including state borrowing powers to offset the lack of investment by the private sector. But while planning for future decommissioning, we should not take our eyes off the prize. Our focus must remain on extracting maximum economic benefit from the UK continental shelf and that support.